So hello everyone and welcome to our second S, um, our second in this series where we ask um, questions um, to various members of our church. Um, today we are asking, is the Bible relevant? Um, and we're here with Sue, Annie and Simon to answer this question. Um, so Simon, will you take us away, please? Yeah, thank you, uh, Sam. Um, so to begin with, I'm going to go back to our discussion um, we had last week about where is God in um, coronavirus. And um, I think it was Camilla said um, when we were thinking about suffering and God that um, we need to remember that God is much bigger than us. And um, so you know, we can't understand him. He, he's incomprehensible to us human beings. It's something like an ant trying to understand an elephant. And um, if that's the case, um, which as Christians we believe, believe it is, then Christianity is um, a revealed religion, meaning we only can know of God what God reveals of himself to us. And um, when we think in those terms, the Bible is um, a, a, a library, a document that um, God has um, breathed to us, as it says in 2 Timothy 3 about scriptures being God breathed in which he reveals something of him and his nature to us. So if that is the case, then the Bible is relevant because it's revealing something to us about God we cannot know unless he reveals something of um, himself to us. Also um, along those terms, um, we would say as Christians that we are created uh, beings, that we have been made, we do not make ourselves. Um, and so uh, again, if we um, believe that's the case, then we need a way of um, discovering our um, I think we've got a problem here. I think Sam, Sam has gone on mute, and uh, Simon's internet um, has 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 let it let him down. Yes, sorry about that. I'm unmuted now. Um, Sue, would you like to um, take us away whilst we wait for Simon to recover from his <laughs> yes. internet issues? Okay. Um, well, um, as many people will know I'm I'm a, I'm a doctor by training, and uh, so when I was, was given this question about a week ago to think about, I thought about it in the same way as I would look at a bit of medical research. And for me, the question when something, I uh, look at something and see, is it relevant? It has to be three things. One, it has to be true. Secondly, it has to relate to my area of practice. So in medicine, that was rheumatology. And the third thing was, it has to change my practice because there's some amazing scientific discoveries, but they're so esoteric but even they, if they're to do with rheumatology, if they're sort of how, how certain cytokines interact, that's not going to change how, how I was actually going to deal with patients in clinic. So when I came to think about the Bible, is it true? Yes, I think it is true. I think it's an accurate reflection of who God is. That doesn't mean to say that I think it has been written down word for word um, uh, by sort of God dictating. And I think one has to think about... Um, it being a collection of different styles of writing and some of them are trying to give a historical background, some of them are um, poems and songs, uh, others are letters which were directed at a particular group of people and we're sort of, if you like, eavesdropping on them. But I think overall I do believe uh, that the Bible gives us an accurate picture of God wanting a relationship with, with human beings. There are obviously contradictions and things that we can look at in more detail if we want to later on in a discussion. But overall, I'm happy that it is a true reflection of who God is and what he wants us to know about him. Although I would say I don't think it's God's last word. And again, we can come back to that. But I think that things have happened since the Bible was written that build into our picture of God and what he wants us, how he wants us to live today. So secondly, does it relate to... Um, to, to me, yes, uh, it was very relevant uh, and has been to me ever since I became a Christian aged 14. Um, at that time, I knew young people and youth leaders in the church, and they had something about them that I wanted to have too. And they explained to me that there was this character, Jesus Christ. They gave me good evidence that he historically lived uh, and that he died. 
and then he told me that he had risen again conquering death and looking at it as a scientist I could see or I was only 14 at the time but I could see that there was good evidence for, for what they were saying in historical documents and actually although I can't prove that Jesus res uh, rose from the dead I've looked at all the other alternatives and I think it's the most likely and I've always said if somebody can prove to me that Jesus didn't rise from the dead well then my faith falls flat because that's what I'm basing my life on and the Bible has been really important to me since then, reading it most days. I have to say, a lot of days it's a bit like cleaning my teeth. It's something I do just because I do it. But there are days where something leaps out and I think, wow, that, I have never read that into that passage before. Um, and I believe that's the Holy Spirit working through, through the Bible. Um, and um, that's been really valuable. And I think things become relevant over time i mean i think at the moment i probably find the bible more relevant than i have for a long time i think it speaks about god caring for people in tough times of suffering with coronavirus i think it talks to us about how god cares for the beautiful world we've made um, and sort of how we deal with climate change and i think it talks about how god values everybody white black young old and with the the questions about racism which have been put into the media because of the tragic death of George Floyd. I think there, there's stuff in there that speaks into that. So I'm sure you've heard enough from me, um, but that's my opening pitch. Thank you very much. Um, and as we have Simon back for now, I think we should pass back to him before he disappears again. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I didn't do that by myself, honestly, it just, it's happening. It's been happening all day today. So I got to us being created beings and um, needing um, uh, input from our creator, which is uh, the Bible. Um, and if that's the case, then the Bible is relevant. What I would also like to say, I think, is that people often struggle with the Bible because um, they ask the question, is everything that's in the Bible true? Um, my answer to that question is, um, what we need to understand is the Bible's not a book, it's um, a library and it's full of different genres of writing. So there's poetry, there's story, there's narrative, there's law, uh, there's eyewitness accounts of things that happened, a whole kind of, uh, a whole range of genres of literature. Um, the problem is many people come to the Bible and take, read it as if it's literally true, each thing, but it's not. So um, if you were to describe your love for someone, you probably wouldn't use literal truth. Um, you'd probably use narrative or poetry. Um, and that poetry isn't literally true, but it contains truth. So um, to encourage people to um, see the Bible as being relevant, one of the things I think they need to understand is that, yeah, there's, it's this whole collection of literature that we need to think about and engage with in different ways as we seek the relevance of, of the word, that word of God for, for our lives. Um, I would also say picking up on um, Sue's point, I just heard the, the end of that, is um, that another reason I believe that the Bible is profoundly relevant is because of people's experience of reading the Bible. Um, and so that's uh, personal experience as Sue have said, um, you can, I'm thinking of people like David Suchet, um, when he, he was in a play or something in London, he was feeling a bit depressed, he went back, had a bath, um, and he found a Gideon's Bible, started reading it, and it changed mm -hmm. his life, absolutely changed his life. In the new Alpha course, there's um, um, a slightly amusing illustration or story about a young man who um, was a true story, he was in hospital for um, addiction and other uh, problems and he found the Gideon's Bible in his bedside cabinet and he, he described himself as smoking um, his way through Matthew, Mark and Luke. So he used the pages because Gideon Bibles are very thin pages to smoke something he shouldn't have smoked. And then he got to John's Gospel and he thought, actually, I should probably read this. And he read it, and again, he, he, his testimony is in reading God's word, it changed his life. Because what he received was a love letter from his creator, revealing something about you know, him and the way he should be living life. 
The Bible is the biggest selling book by miles there is in the world. They reckon there's about 100 million copies um, are sold or given away each year. And um, the reason for that is because it changes people's lives when people um, engage with it. In, so it's relevant um, to, to people today just as much as it was. And uh, my final word is that's in part because however long ago bits, different bits of the Bible were written, because of course it was written over um, you know, several thousand years by lots of different people, it was written about people primarily. And people in that time haven't changed. All the technology and everything else around us may have changed, but the things we most struggle with, who am I, why am I alive, um, the things I'm angry about or lustful about or you know, the, the human emotion hasn't changed. And that's what the Bible speaks into. So it's relevant. Excellent. Um, Annie has been waiting very patiently to chip in. Um, right. Over to you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think I'd pick up on bits of, that you both said. I think perception is a problem. And I think people's perception of the Bible is often that it's all sort of these and thous, and it was written over 2,000 years ago in a, in a, you know, thousands of miles away from us and what, and what, what possible relevance can it have now? Um, I think on a personal level, I th sort of think of the Bible, it's a bit like an instruction, but we're talking about different genres and um, how it's written. It's a bit like a sort of instruction manual for life. But what's unique about the Bible, I think, is that it relates to you all the time. So different people could be reading a different passage of the Bible at exactly the same time. But depending on their circumstances or where they're at emotionally at that particular moment in time, God will reach you. Um, and I think that's what makes the Bible unique. So it gives us help and hope when things get difficult and I think you know now particularly it's really sort of pertinent and I know in my own experience it's when I, I became a Christian when I was about 20 and I was quite a reluctant Christian I kind of started going to church because my then boyfriend wanted me to go to church but it wasn't an, it was when life became a bit tricky or I had to deal with certain things that I realized that my faith was mine now it wasn't based on Peter, it, um, Peter was my boyfriend at the time. It was very much based on me, and it was, it was that knowledge, and being able to go to the Bible and find those passages, passages that helped me, that that really got me through some quite difficult times. Um, I think also you can't compare the. Again, it's unique because you can't compartmentalize it. Um, and I remember last, I had a particular situation last year where. I was given Psalm 23, which is usually the psalm, to be honest, you associate with funerals. And I was like, oh, you know, this is a bit scary. But actually, it was God telling me that, um, yes, something was about to happen, but I'm with you and you will get through this. Don't worry. Just, you know, stick by me sort of thing. And that was a huge encouragement. But I have notes here, so I'll just relate to, to my notes. Um, I think the most important thing for me with the Bible, and I think Simon touched on this um, briefly in his sort of introduction, is to me it's about how we meet God. You know, God isn't here with us, we can't talk to him literally, but by reading the Bible, that, that's how we meet and understand God, and that's how God meets and understands us. Um, and I think it's by, it's by that that we develop our own personal relationship with him. And it enables us to put, put our trust in something that's, that's bigger than us. I think it's, on a very basic level, it's really important to have something that when things go wrong or you have a problem that you need to deal with, that you know that there's something there bigger than it, bigger, bigger than you and yours that you can go to and just talk to like you would anyone else, you know, like you would somebody here, like you know, a friend or your, your, ha your husband or whatever. Um, and ultimately he's our father and I was again thinking about this today and I think my I sadly lost my dad about four years ago and 
when he died and you know when lots of people die everybody always says what a lovely person they were and you know relate stories and things about that person which is which is true and my dad was a great person um but i know the impact that my dad had on me i know that i know when he reprimanded me or when he praised me for something and he was always there for me and i think it's exactly the same thing with god he in the end at the end of the day he is our father as well and it's that it's that same sort of relationship um and i think in the new testament obviously we we meet jesus and experience jesus and his teaching and you know ultimately that's where god really met us with his son who was as human as we are <laughs> um with some of the failings that we have as well and as I say, for me, I think the, the Bible is will always be relevant because it's our way to God, and it's how we get it's how we get to know God and how God gets to know us. So that's that for me. Thank you. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, so um, one thing I'd quite like to remind everyone else who's joining in on this group chat is there is a typing chat function. If anyone has any follow-on questions they want to kind of add to this conversation. If you ask them in there, then I'll see them and I'll pick them out and then we can discuss them with the group. Um, so moving on to kind of the next step of this, has your, throughout your experience in your Christian life, how has your understanding of this question changed over time? Like, did, uh, did you used to view the relevance of the Bible in a different way to the way you do now, um, starting with soup? I think that's very interesting. When I became a Christian, I remember being incredibly excited that I was going to read my way through the Bible. That was going to be fantastic. I'm going to read from start to end. Um, I was a bit worried about what I was going to do once I'd done that. I thought, well, I probably will have cracked it by then. Well, actually, it, it was okay because God has a sense of humour. By the time I got to Leviticus, I had well and truly given up on the plan. Um, and I started to pick out bits that I enjoyed more rather than wading through the whole of the Old Testament. But it has always fascinated me that I've been able to come back to different passages and see different things in them. I, I think, though, over time, the Bible has remained really important and it's a really good place for testing out other ideas. Sort of, Does this fit with what I see in the Bible? Because I really do believe that the Bible is, is, is God's clearest way of putting together everything that he wants us to know. But as I said earlier, I don't think it's his last word to us. And I think over time, other things have become really important in me getting to know God better. And I was thinking, I think this is rather like having children. When, when uh, we had Pippa, I just fell in love with her. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And I, I loved her dearly. And there was a bit of me when we were thinking about having a second child. Would I be able to love them as much? And actually, of course, your heart just expands. And I promise you, Sam, you'll love just as much as Pippa is. Um, and I think that those people who have more than two children, they, they, they say it just keeps on happening. And I think that I still love the Bible and I love it as much as I used to. But poetry and my experience and pictures and all sorts of other things have helped me get to know God better. And they've also helped me to understand the Bible better. I think that, as Simon says, I think I've learnt that actually poetry and books like the Psalms are not necessarily to be taken word for word, but they give us a picture of God's amazing creation. They give us a picture of how God allows us to come to him and say why and how long and and pour out our, our, our sadness. And I think that Psalms in particular is a book of the Bible, which I, like many other people, have grown into as I've had more life experience. So I think I, I come at it in different ways. Um, I think that I grew up, and I'm very grateful to Above Bar Church having been a very important part of my um, uh, Christian life. And that was very much a Bible-based uh, church. And I think that was a great grounding, but I think it's been very helpful to, to move into other areas where people have challenged me a bit more about, well, do you believe in all of this literally? And do you believe that this bit is as important as that bit? And, and I, I think that that's, that's great that we can have honest discussion, but it's still for me a very relevant book. Thank you. 
Wonderful. Um, Annie, over to you. I think when I first became a Christian, as I say, I was probably quite cynical. Well, I was quite cynical. <laughs> um, and as I, as I got to know my sort of church family more and I became, I suppose, more comfortable really in church and in that, that sort of setting. And as I read my Bible more and develop that relationship more you know I, I, you, you, when you start to pray and you develop that relationship with God I think God knows he, he knows us better than we know ourselves ultimately and he knows how we operate and I similar to what Sue was saying I think when you first become a Christian you're like right so I'm going to do I'm going to buy read the Bible from you know beginning to end and um and ultimately I I don't read the Bible as much as I should do and I'd be the first one to put my hand up to admit that but God knows that um, and he doesn't sort of beat you with a stick because of it but what he does do is um, he, he sort of meets you where you're at with it and I, and I think in my experience that, that I have a daily reading bible which I you know I don't read every day I try to but there have been times when I've gone to it and I've picked it up and the daily reading for that day has been something completely relevant to how I was feeling at, the, at that time and as Sue said Psalms is often something that comes up and that is exactly I had a situation last year where exactly that happened I went to my daily reading bible and it gave me a particular psalm and it could have been written for me that day it was it was quite amazing um so I think you're uh, and again as Sue said I think some of it comes some of it comes with maturity I think your relationship does develop with maturity um, and experiences and, and what happens happens in life and for me my relationship with God and my faith has been it gives you it gives you a, somewhere to to dump something if, if you if, if you're struggling with something and you're able to to pray about it or go to the bible and find some encouragement in the bible it gives you the ability to just put it put it down for a bit and then just get on with your day and get on with the stuff that you have to do and then god will come back to you with it later and give you the advice um or you know whatever it is that you need and that's for me that's what the bible has been about as well and it's it, it will always be relevant for that reason and it's it's ever changing that's what's unique about the bible it, it, it evolves with you um, and that that's what makes it so important. Excellent. Um, me. Um, yes. Uh, well, one of the things just popped into my mind um, whilst we were speaking about why is the Bible relevant, and um, one of the reasons is I think um, is. Um, Jesus read it. So if, if you ever look at um, Jesus, um, um, you know, arguing with the devil or the, the religious leaders of the day, he quoted from the Bible because he read it. So if he thinks it's relevant, we should think it's relevant. He used it in, you know, in everything that uh, he, he did. Um, my experience, why is it relevant to me? Well, I guess like both uh, Sue and Annie have said, it's, it's changed in my life. Um, I can remember as a um, young Christian, I used to go to a Baptist church and um, I, I approached the Bible as if it was a scientific document, really, I think, and looked for absolute truths in it that I was willing to argue with you know, everyone. And then over the years, um, that's changed in that things like poetry, the Psalms, the things we've spoken about um, have become more of value to me and I see in the Bible that it isn't so much about literal truth as discovering um, you know I don't know love and, and relationship and these other things and when you see it like that each day the Bible speaks to me differently um, depending on where I am and what's going on in my life I could read the same verse almost every day and would see it differently every day so it's become this thing that is like a many faceted jewel in a way that just reflects something of God in surprising and different ways. And actually, um, one of the things that's been very important um, to me discovering that has been reading the Bible in community and not by myself. 
Um, so having people who may see the Bible slightly differently and challenging me, you know, it feels uncomfortable and a bit difficult, but actually that's where I've grown most in my understanding and engagement with the Bible is reading it in community. And I think that's really important because um, you can get people, and I include myself in this, who could read something in the Bible and come up with a completely bonkers idea about it and say, this is what God is telling me to do and telling the church to do. And then in community, you could say this and someone might say, well, actually, Simon, have you, have you seen it from this perspective or have you thought about this? And this is what I think about that. And actually, I really think that's how the Bible is um, supposed to be read um, in community. Or, you know, it always has been. It's from Jewish tradition to through the early church. Um, and, you know, that's how we got our doctrines, really. Um, and it's important that we continue in, in that tradition, that we read it together and are open to one another's um, different interpretations uh, of this book that reveals to us something of the God we cannot possibly know without him revealing something of himself to us. Um, yeah, I think I'll stop there for now. Wonderful. Well, we, we are running close to the end of our time, so I think we should hand over to everyone for any kind of final thoughts, anything you have to wrap this up, or any kind of any of your other panelists have kind of said in the last section. Um, Annie? I was just going to say, um, in relation to what Simon's just said about sharing in community, and Sue will back me up in this because of our, um, our online group last night, we were looking at passages in the Bible that maybe we found a bit challenging or that we sort of maybe avoided. <laughs> um, and it's exactly that. It was really interesting how in discussion, we, we, were, we were looking at the same parable, uh, lots of them were uh, parables. We were looking at the same parable, but everybody was coming up with a slightly different take on it. And it was really, really valuable and really interesting. So very much that that is what the Bible is about and, can, and is, it should be is useful. Wonderful. Um, any closing thoughts from Sue? Yes, I, I, I go along with that. I mean, house groups have been really important, but also those individual friends who I've chatted and batted things through with. And I think it's interesting. I think a lot of people struggle with thinking that they should believe in the Bible in a particular way and they should read it in a particular way. And I think it depends on your character. I, I love books. So for me, reading the Bible is an easy thing to do. Whereas I think there are other people who will find that whilst they will enjoy hearing the Bible preached in church on Sunday, they will meet God better in prayer or whilst running or um, in um, doing something creative. So I think that it's really important that we um, allow other people to, to use the Bible in different ways to us and learn from them. Because I think that as I've learned different ideas, I mean, some people are really good at imagining themselves in a Bible passage. I'm, I'm pretty hopeless at that, but I think it's good to try different things. And, and I think that's been something that's been important to be challenged by other people to look at things in different ways. Okay, and Simon, um, any closing thoughts you have? And if you, I don't know if you've seen the question. I have, I've answered that question. Chat, which I might. <laughs> so the question that's just come up is if the Bible is open to, to interpretation, how can we avoid just taking what we want to hear or avoid misunderstanding and disputes with other Christians? Well, um, I mean, there has to be an ultimate truth, I, I, I uh, believe. Um, but that's why it's so important to read the Bible in community. So we can say, look, I've just read this passage. This is what I think it says. Then someone else might say, well, actually, from my experience and study, this is what I think it says. And um, that's, I mean, that question is why it's so important to read it in community. But we just don't um, take away what we want to take away from when we read the Bible. Um, as Also, as um, Anglicans, um, we believe in a, a three-legged stool. Um, which is when we read the Bible, we read it, uh, so scripture, tradition, um, and um, it's, uh, uh, it's scripture, tradition, and, and things like science, basically, that we take into consideration as well when we read these things. So 
you know, when we read the Bible, we, we bring in other tools and other uh, uh, views to what we discern is truth. But actually, it's a good question because, um, you know, truth is a hard thing to get to. And we can see the conflict that is caused within the church just from reading from people reading um, in, in the Bible, different interpretations of what they think it means. But that brings us back to the original starting point is we believe in a God who's beyond us and is, mm. you know, we need to go on a journey to discover his will. And that journey is never alone. It's with others, with a community. So I hope that's a long winded answer to that question. There's no easy answer to that one. Um, other than saying, I do believe there is a, a, an ultimate truth and that ultimate truth is God. And we need t together to, um, you know, go on the journey of, working out what it is he is well i would also say um if you are bored of reading your bible in other words you find it frustrating boring and difficult you don't understand it then do something about it there's lots of resources out there um bible reading notes um uh, don't read the bible get david suchet with his deep uh, you know lovely tones to read it to you <laughs> or an app on your phone but you know gauge with it some way join a group um I mean, things like this might be good, a good way forward where we have questions from the Bible about what do you think of this passage where we uh, together kind of um, tease out um, relevance and truth and meaning, but do something. This year was year of the prayer. Next year for us as church is going to be year of the Bible when we will hopefully be gathering together lots of resources and different ways of um, engaging with scripture that hopefully will bring it more alive and make it more relevant to you. So, um, yeah, if you want to read the Bible more, wait till next year or do something <laughs> yourself and look around at the resources there are out there. It's fun. Wonderful. Well, um, thank you very, very much, everyone, um, both everyone on our panel and everyone who's joined us. Um, if you've, um, yeah, if you've been joining us live or have joined us on YouTube, feel free or three to um, follow on, check out our church website and other materials we've got there. Thank you very much, everyone.